You know I think you're amazing, right? Nah, nah, you're really dope. You're dope. It's just, it's not really good timing right now. I'm serious. I'm going through something right now. You know I just got out the, you know? Come on, don't do this. Seriously, stop. It's too much. I look so crusty right now. I literally tried to like pop this pimple last night, but instead I just bruised my face. Um, and I'm also really sweaty because I just took a giant poop. So, yeah. Um, I hope any future employers watching this video appreciate me talking about my bowel movements on the internet. Um, I have no concept of a digital footprint, apparently. Anyway, on to the video. So, growing up, I never really enjoyed sports or exercise. Neither of my parents are particularly athletic. Um, we were never really like a hiking, running together, sports playing family. And exercise was never something that I was particularly good at. And now that I'm an adult, I'm better at not doing this. But when I was a kid, I hated doing things that I wasn't good at. I just like refused to do them. And I tried a lot of different sports growing up. I did Muay Thai for quite a while. I did swimming, I did ice skating, I tried running, I tried going to the gym, I tried yoga, I tried Pilates, I tried a lot of YouTube at home workouts. I, any sport, I did it like at school or outside of school. And I tried really hard to like find a sport that I enjoyed slash was good at and liked doing, um, but that just didn't happen for me. So I never really liked exercise um, as a kid or as an adult. It's only been in the last few months that I've really started to enjoy exercise. So for any non-athletic guys and gals out there, hopefully this video will be somewhat helpful to you. The first tip I have is to know your why and to make a good one. So a lot of people have know your why as like the tip for why you should be exercising or to get you motivated to exercise. This is basically the thing that motivates you to get out of bed in the morning and go on a run or whatever it is. But I think what people often forget when they give that advice is that not all whys slash not all motivations are created equal. I think that there are some whys that are better than others. So for example, when I was younger and even as an adult, a lot of the reason why I wanted to exercise was so that I could be skinny. So I was, and still sometimes am, but a lot worse when I was younger, very insecure about my body and thought that I needed to lose weight and be skinnier. And I thought like exercise was the way to achieve that, especially because I love eating and I don't have good self control to eat less food. So I always saw it as like this way of achieving that goal and like feeding those insecurities. I also saw exercise as like a kind of punishment. Like if exercise made me feel bad, either physically or mentally, then that meant that the exercise was working. And like neither of those things are particularly motivating. And so I always saw exercise as like this thing that I had to do, but dreaded doing basically. My whys now are very different and they're much more focused on the short term, which I think can often be quite motivating if you have like, oh, I just wanna have good physical health when I'm older. I feel like that makes it hard to do exercise in the now because that's something so far in the future and you won't see the positive effects right away. So the first why that I have is socializing. So one of the, why am I literally out of breath in a video talking about exercising? Anyway, um, one of the first types of exercise that I like to do is ice skating. I've made a lot of videos about ice skating on my channel before. And one reason I really like doing it is because I've made so many new friends through attending the group lessons. And now I do private lessons with a coach with three of my friends, two of whom I met through ice skating, which is pretty cool. And even though I like skating for like the spins and the jumps and like all the cool things you can do. And I love the feeling of being on the ice. A big part of it is like getting to socialize with those people that I've met through ice skating. Similarly, I went climbing for the first time last week with my cousin who was visiting me here in the Philippines. And we live together in London. And that was really fun to like do a social thing with him that he really enjoys. And so now when I go back to London, we can go climbing together with our other flatmate who also likes climbing. So I think socializing and being able to spend time with people I care about is a really big motivating factor to me and makes me enjoy exercise more because it doesn't feel like this chore I'm doing. It feels like, oh, I get to go hang out with my friends and have fun. My second why is functional. So growing up, I did swimming a lot. I 
did lessons when I was a kid and then I was too advanced for like the younger kids class so I moved up to the older kids class and then all the older kids bullied me so I quit. Um, the bullying was probably warranted because my coach let me like walk back instead of swim back. I don't know why she let me do that but um, I was like too tired to keep up with these kids that were like double my size so they made fun of me for that and that was probably fair. But anyway, I quit swimming because I was and am a sensitive girl. And then I did swimming again when I was in secondary school because I knew it would make my mom happy. But the swimming was like with the swim team, like people in my school swim team. Obviously I was not in the swim team. Um, as I've said, I was not an athletic girl. And so I would be so tired at the end of the sessions like every single day that I had this. So I did it on Saturday mornings and it was at school. I had to go to school on Saturday morning. Um, and after every session, I would like go to the bathroom dry heaving because I was so tired that I felt like I was gonna throw up all the time. And I got a foot wart from the changing room. So now I'm gonna get foot warts forever. So that's my experience with swimming. And obviously I know how to swim and I think it's useful, but I think now I'm really appreciative of it because it's given me a lot of functionality. So I've mentioned in my past few videos that like I went to Palawan recently and I was able to swim without a life jacket and like dive down to see the sea turtles and swim with them or like go snorkeling and things like that. And that was really cool. And I wouldn't have been able to do that. I think if I wasn't so confident in my swimming abilities. So now I'm like much more motivated to swim so I can be like, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this so that I can swim for longer and feel much safer when I swim in the ocean. But that's purely from like a functionality. I just wanna be able to like snorkel and I love the ocean and I love sea creatures. Like I literally have two shell tattoos and a hermit crab tattoo. So I think having that as like a motivator of being able to like go on holiday and swim and snorkel and see sea creatures is like a much better motivation for swimming than other exercising motivators I've had in the past. My third motivation is my mental health. And I guess this slightly contradicts what I said earlier because this is more of a long-term thing, but I feel like for me, it's more significant in the short run than the long run. So I'm gonna give an example because that's not clear at all. Basically, I find that running really helps with my anxiety. I can often really be anxious and like the one or two times where I've actually been able to use my brain and be like, oh, I should go on a run instead of like having negative coping mechanisms, it's made me feel a lot better. And I know that that's like a cliche and obvious, like exercise is good for your mental health. Exercise makes you happy and releases endorphins and all that jazz. I genuinely think when I'm running, I'm like too tired to have my anxious thoughts because my brain is like, just trying to keep up with the fact that I'm like moving my body this much. And so then I don't feel as much anxiety. So that's my solution. And the reason why I say it's short term, it's because it's like dealing with anxiety, like in the moment. So that is my third motivating factor. So I think it's important to have a why and like a motivation to exercise, but that those why should be like good ones, short term and things that aren't like detrimental to you that make you see exercise as a punishment. My next tip is know thyself. So you probably know when you feel more tired, when you don't like a particular exercise. Like for me personally, I know that if I'm on my period, I'm gonna just be more tired. And if I haven't slept well, I'm just not gonna perform as well. I won't be able to lift as heavy weights. I won't be able to run as long. It, it's just not gonna happen. Um, I also know that I don't like stretching before running or like warming up before running. I know that you should warm up before you exercise, but by the end of the warm up, I'm like, I'm tired already. I don't want to do this exercise. So what I will do is make sure that I stretch afterwards and like do a proper cool down so that I don't injure my body. But in reality, I know I'm not going to warm up and I'd rather just do the exercise and use like other preventative measures to not harm myself than be like, okay, well, I'm just not gonna exercise at all because I don't wanna do this warm up. I also know that even though these might be things I enjoy, I realistically like can't afford a personal trainer. I can't afford to go to the fancy Pilates classes around London. I can't really afford a gym membership. So I just go to like the vaguely creepy free one in my office. And I'm really lucky that my office does provide a free gym, even though it's like weird vibes in there. The things that I can do are normally like cheaper or I won't go as often. And I know like the things I have the time for, like that I'd rather go running or go to the gym on like a lunch break than before or after work because I'll be too tired. My one exception, what is that noise? There's like a plane. My one exception is going to the gym after work on Mondays with my friend Chelsea, because again, it has that socializing 
aspect of I get to spend time with my friend after work. Just knowing what you can afford in terms of time and money and trying to work with those things and around those things rather than trying to like push through them or punishing yourself or thinking, oh, I'm doing the wrong thing because I can't afford or don't want to go to those things. That brings me onto my final tip, which is that something is better than nothing. I used to get like so angry with myself when I would go to the gym and like not be able to complete the exercises that I had planned doing or like had to drop down a weight in the next set or if I would go running and not be able to run like more than 1.52 kilometers before getting shin splints or like getting tired. I still don't know if it's shin splints or shin splits and I always say it wrong all the time. I'm sure you're a smart person, you viewer, you can figure out which one it is. Um, but yeah, I used to be like really upset with myself or like ice skating when I wasn't doing well. And now I try and remind myself that doing something is better than doing nothing. It meant that I had like this extreme all or nothing attitude at the time of I'm either gonna like push myself and punish myself and do the most that I can, which meant that like that wasn't sustainable and that I would just exercise like once and then have to wait like three weeks before exercising again or I just be like, I'm not gonna bother doing this and do absolutely nothing. It's much easier said than done to like not beat yourself up for not exercising as much as you think you should or like reaching your full potential. But I definitely think that that mindset shift really helped me. One thing that helped me do this is like telling my friends and family, especially like my flatmates, cause I see them all the time. Like, oh, I went on a run today or I did this today. And like the people that care about you are much less harsh on you than you usually are on yourself. And so often like my friends and family would be like, wow, I'm really proud of you. Or like, that's really cool. And yeah, that helped me. And once I took that kind of external validation and internalized those same attitudes of, oh, these people who care about me think it's good. So why am I so harsh on myself? That made a big difference. Another thing that helped me is asking myself, okay, let's say I only exercise for 15 to 20 minutes, which is not that long, but what would I have been doing instead in that time? The answer is probably like doom scrolling on TikTok. So isn't it better that I at least did some form of exercise, even if it was for a short time, which has all of these like positive things, both in terms of like the motivators that I talked about, but also exercise is good for your mental health, physical health, can I speak? Mental health and physical health. It's good, it has so many long-term benefits. It's good to go outside, have fresh air, etc. cetera. Um, and so that's, yeah, better than what else I would have been doing with those 15 to 20 minutes of my time. And that reframing also really helped me to realize that like, no matter how big or small the exercise that I was doing, it is beneficial. And I think letting go of that like controlling perfectionist nature gave me the ability to actually enjoy it instead of being like, I have failed somehow in the way I'm exercising. So I hope that if you're someone who doesn't really like exercising and grew up not being good at sports or being very athletic like me, that this is somewhat helpful to you. I think it takes time to find things that you enjoy. And I think we often forget that like a big important part of life is like having fun and being happy. And I'm glad that I now often have fun while doing exercise because that's not something that I ever really experienced in the past, except like getting all hot and sweaty from dancing alone in my room or something like that. But yeah, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below anything you want to comment down below. If you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please make sure to give it, nope, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. I honestly, at this point, should change my outro because I always get it wrong.